y'all add the quality in. <laughs> I thought niggas like me go to the quality. What's going on, folk, folk? This be your boy, Scotty, and we're here for another review of G-Status ATL Hustle, bro. That's what we're here for. And yes, I'm kind of tipsy, but it really don't matter because I ain't got to go to work in the morning, so it don't matter. I'm finna get fucked up, okay? And I was getting fucked up as I was watching this goddamn show. Sometimes you need to get fucked up watching the show because some shit be funny as fuck. Some shit that you wouldn't even, wouldn't even be laughing at. If you want to fucked up, okay? However, we finna talk about this photo shoot. Now, we pick up where we left out last week, okay? Now, last week, we was at Redrick's photo shoot. Now, I did not know that our guy was going to be at the photo shoot, but he, his ass was up in there with him. And now, is it just me? Is it just me now? And I ain't even being shady. I ain't even trying to be funny. But this some real G shit right here. Is it just me? Or do our guy look like Shamari DeVoe? When I'm talking about Shamari DeVoe, I'm talking about Shamari from fucking Black. Shamari that used to be that drunk bitch on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Don't he kind of look like he could be her little brother? Like, and I ain't no shade because Shamari is pretty to me. And he looks just like Shamari to me. Like, they're just real fucking talk, though. Like, I just had to throw that in. But Re but Redrick um, pretty much um, fills him in about what happened at Akeem's um, hibachi dinner. For the last time. The main name is Hakeem. It's shit. I'm getting the shit wrong now. The main name is Akeem, not Hakeem. I told y'all to say Moesha, bitch. However, basically, Redrick tells this whole story about how Devon threw the drink. Four, two, no, four, three, two, one, stepped on her face and all types of shit. And our guy was like, see, that's the reason why I ain't want to go. That's the reason why I ain't want to go, because I ain't want to be around this shit. That is the reason why I didn't want to go. I don't want to be around people like that. You know all the shit that our guy likes to say. You know, whatever. So then Devon pops up. And Devon says that Akeem invited him to the shoot. But come to find out, Redrick don't know shit about that. So it, it looks real messy on Akeem's end to invite Devon to this photo shoot and his ass ain't even there. Ain't that some shit? But didn't they say Akeem is on some production type shit? You know, that's at least that's what they were saying. But Redrick was just talking about Devon. He, he was just saying that he don't know what he'll do if he see Devon. Devon walks in, ready to apologize. But the thing with Devon is, and y'all know, y'all know <laughs> that I love that nigga down. <laughs> I love his black ass. But sometimes Devon just don't know when to just shut the hell up and just let a person say what they gotta say because he was not having it. But at the same time, nigga Redrick wasn't having it either. He wasn't trying to hear shit Devon had to say. But I do feel like Devon was there to apologize. And I feel like because Redrick was so amped up about the situation, all he knows is that he got stepped on. That's all he knows. And all Devon knows is that Redrick is a big bitch. How the fuck he let two little niggas step on his ass? But at the same time, though, Devon, you got to understand, bro. Like I told you on the last one. You escalated the situation by throwing the drink. So, therefore, you know, of course, you're going to get the blame for it because you were the one who threw the drink. However, Redrick, if the nigga come here to apologize, just accept the apology and keep moving. Like, ain't nobody saying you got to be the nigga best friend. Ain't nobody saying that you got to be, you know, the nigga bosom buddy. He, he, ain't nobody saying you got to be freaking frank. Ain't nobody saying none of this shit. Just accept the apology and keep it moving. But if you don't want to accept the apology, then, you know, don't accept it. But at the same time, Devon, if you're trying to apologize to a motherfucker and the motherfucker don't want to hear nothing you got to say and the motherfucker don't want to accept your apology, then you need to just keep it moving. Ain't no need for you to be trying to, accept, trying to make a motherfucker hear what you got to say. Because if a motherfucker don't want to hear what I got to say... My Aquarian ass is going to be like, okay, well, fuck you. And I'm going to take my apologies somewhere else where somebody will accept the motherfucker and move on. That's just my mentality. 
I'm not saying that you got to have the same mentality as me because your ass is Scorpio. So you're going to do shit way different than me because I'm not an argumentative nor am I a confrontational person. I ain't with this shit. So at the end of the day, if you don't want to accept my motherfucking apology, bitch, then you ain't got to. I don't even give a fuck. So that's really what it is. And then Shamari Jr., you know, got involved and said what he had to say. And Devon was like, and who the fuck is this bitch? Like, why the fuck this bitch even talking? <laughs> so Devon was like, no, not Devon. Our guy was like, look, I put, we, we didn't pay for this photo shoot. We trying to get this photo shoot together. We ain't got time to be sitting up here arguing with your ass about nothing. We up here at this photo shoot. We got we to gotta take these goddamn Polaroids. God damn it, we ain't got time to be arguing with you. And at this point, it's kind of like this, Devon. Like, this is how I feel with you. And you know I love you damn now. You know you my chocolate, my favorite chocolate person. But look, if a person don't want to hear what you got to say, and if, if you really came to be genuinely apologetic and they don't want to hear that shit, then just move on. Ain't no point of you constantly trying to make these motherfuckers hear what you got to say. And Redrick, you got to learn how to leave well enough alone or you got to learn how to let well enough go. Because I understand why you would be upset. Don't take that like I don't get it because I understand exactly why you would be upset. I'd be upset too. You know, I'd be upset too, goddammit. I would be too. If motherfuckers stopped on my gorgeous ass face and I got some new teeth in my mouth, I'd be mad too. So, I don't, I'm not mad at you about that. But I do feel like you was harping on it. He was trying to get a word in edgewise and I just felt like you wasn't allowing him to. And then you got our guy standing up here getting involved in the situation as well. So it's kind of like, okay, what, what can he do? But at the same time, Devon, you know, he mad because you got, because he got stepped on and that's dead. And I, I was like, you know what? This this argument was a waste of time. Redrick, if you didn't want to accept the apology, just leave. But Devon, if he kept asking your ass to leave, just leave. Don't be don't be nowhere where you ain't want it. Take your ass on. And this is coming for somebody who likes Redrick, our guy, and Devon. I like all three people. So there ain't no sides being taken. Trust and believe me on that like Keisha Cole. So then we get into Delicious. Um, I think she was recording her song. And she's getting prepared for this big ass show that she got coming out. So you know. It, um, I think we're getting into the territory of showing what people are doing at this point. So I appreciated seeing Delicious um, working on her music and getting prepared for a show. Now what I about her music. That's another story. Now Sherrod is rehearsing to be a backup dancer in this dude's video and all i know about this dude is that he got a beard that look like it could be a goddamn mascot for fucking taco bell lord that damn beard had a lot of taco meat on it lord have mercy i didn't know what the fuck i was looking at i didn't know if i was looking at a goddamn beard or if i was looking at a goddamn Taco, soft taco supreme. I didn't know what the fuck I was looking at, bro. But you need to calm this shit down if you're going to get on camera. Because I know I've had me some days on camera where I looked a hot ass mess. But bitch, mm. however, Sharai wasn't feeling it. You know, this is usually his thing, you know what I'm saying? But he really wasn't feeling it, you know what I mean? So, it, it, the the rehearsal was just bad all over. It just, was, it just wasn't a good rehearsal at all. So, Tramiel is at this radio station. And I don't know if he really worked at this radio station. I don't know if he an intern or not. But he was interviewing Sammy. And I like Sammy. I like the way you look at me. I like <laughs> Yes, I can't dance. You ain't got to remind me, B. However, that was a pretty nice interview. But the thing about it was that it just felt like everybody else was talking except for Tramiel. You know what I mean? Like, I just felt like he should have had more to say. But like I said, I was looking in the comments and everybody was talking about how boring shit was. But my thing about it is, y'all get mad when they don't show what the fuck they doing. But when they show what the fuck they doing, it's boring. What the hell do y'all want from me, folks? That's all I'm saying. Now we're at the quality end, bitch. <laughs> And Akeem is throwing a barbecue. Now, I'm thinking he throwing his barbecue at his apartment complex or some shit like that. Well, not at his, not at an apartment complex. At a chateau. You know what I mean? But it's at the Quality Inn. Okay, ain't nothing wrong with the Quality Inn. You know, we used to have our little parties in high school at the Quality Inn. So, I don't see what's wrong with it. Mm. And stop saying event. The shit is a get-together. Ain't nothing wrong with it being a get-together. Just say it's a fucking... But Akeem was thanking everybody, was was thanking everybody for coming, and he was appreciative of everybody showing up and all of that other shit. But then, Redrick decides that he wants to confront Akeem. 
and he felt like the energy was bad between him and Akeem. And, um, you know, Akeem, my thing with him is that he don't listen. And he don't let nobody talk. He don't let nobody get a word in edgewise. He just don't. And I just feel like he run his mouth too much. And if he would just shut the hell up and let people talk, things won't escalate. But sometimes when a king continues to insert himself while somebody else is talking, it makes it worse. Bitch, let us talk. Let us get it out the way. You know, let us do all of that. Okay? Like, we ain't got to sit up here and keep doing this. Like, just let me say what I got to say and shut the hell up. But he don't know how to do that. He just got to say something. And even Devon had had to try to come in and just, you know, smooth things over with him and Richard. Because he was about to go up to another place because Akeem don't know when to shut the hell up. Then Akeem started coming for Roman. And he started talking about how he was looking at him. How the hell can you see? What the hell he looking at? The hat is this bitch. The main hat was like this. You can barely see his eyes. What the fuck are you seeing, Akeem? That's all I want to know. What in the hell are you looking at? Because the main hat was just like that. Period. So, Brandon is there. And Delicious sees him to the side by himself. So, she decides to go, so, go over there and see what the hell wrong with about him. Pretty much. And it's basically about a situation where Delicious basically tells Brandon that, you know, when, he, when she and Sherrod and Charlie and Argyle went out for dinner or something like that. They started popping shit about Brandon working at California Pizza Company and all this other stuff. So he decides, so Devon sees them over there talking and Devon misses himself. <laughs> Want to bring them over there to spill the tea. So basically Devon brings the mess to the table. And after he brings the mess to the table, Brandon decides to confront Charlie and our guy about the situation. Now they're ultimately on the defense. That's what I'm saying. They're ultimately on the defense. They're barking off at Brandon, but it's not Brandon that's saying the shit. Delicious is the one that, that told him that, you know, y'all was popping shit about him. So when they showed the, the flashback of them sitting down at the bar, well, not really at the bar, but at a table talking, you know what I mean? They started saying that, you know, Brandon worked at California Pizza Company or whatever, and they busted out laughing after they said it. Now, I can understand that in their mind they wasn't being shady, but at the same time, though, it's like, okay, like, y'all were being shady. And that's just what it is. You was being shady, and that's all I got to say about it. Like, and, I mean, at the end of the day, like, I can understand how Delicious started with shade because y'all giggle at the fact that he was working at California Pizza Company. You know what I mean? Like, it's a bad thing to have a 9 to 5. My ass, let me tell y'all something. I'm sitting up here on YouTube right now. I've been doing YouTube for 10 years. And 2020 is the year, my 10th year. It'll be 10 years in October. 2020 was the year that I decided to take this shit serious and try to take it to another level and start doing interviews, doing the podcast, doing all of that stuff. And I still have a 9 to 5 job. Okay, I still have one. I make a decent amount of money. That's why I'm able to do the shit that I want to do and able to go where the fuck I want to go and wear what the fuck I want to wear and do this. But I'm not a flashy ass bitch. I don't never sit up here and act like I have it all. I don't have it all at all. P -p Trust me, I don't. And even if I did, I wouldn't even be acting like the way some of these other girls be acting on this show. Like, come on now. Like, it doesn't matter what you got. Like, just be a decent person. It don't even matter. But at the same time, like I said, I can understand how it could come across as shade. Now, I do understand if Charlie and our guy sincerely didn't mean it to be shade, but looking at that clip, it did look like, okay, these bitches trying to shade this boy. That's how I look. Now, if that's not what it was, then that's not what it was, but that's the way it came across. So, to be honest, if, if it really wasn't shade and that wasn't your intent to be shady, what is the harm in just saying, I apologize um, for saying, for making you feel that way? Like, I didn't mean to say it like that. Like, it was really just in jest. Like, it really wasn't that serious. But being that y'all was so defensive and shit like that, I was like, okay, what y'all so mad for? But delicious. You didn't have to tell him that. But then again, at the same time, delicious just being a friend. Because if a, a couple of the bitches sitting in front of me talking about my friend, and I don't even fuck with them like that. I'm going to tell my friend what the fuck they said. But if but if I handle it myself, I'm not telling my friend shit. I already handled the situation. They don't need to know shit. That's how I feel. Like, if I'm sitting in front of a person and they popping shit about my friend, I don't never tell my friend what the fuck going on. I handle it on my own. Like, I shut it down right then and there. I ain't telling my friend shit. For what? I handled it.
They know to talk about you in front of me no more. So then, Charlie and our guy go in on Delicious and Brandon. And Brandon's just going all the way in. Snapping his fingers. Doing his hands and all this other shit. And then, Mikey starts going in on Sherrod. And I know, and I noticed that when they first brought Sherrod's name up, Mikey was rolling his eyes. And I'm like, Mikey, why the fuck are you rolling your eyes? What the fuck going on with you? What the hell? All these issues got a problem with everybody. Fuck. What the fuck going on? Jesus. And as Mikey is going in on Sherrod, Delicious and Charlie are steady going at it. And the moment that Charlie said this, bitch, cut your dick off. Bitch, I was like. Did he really say that? Did he really say that? Now, Charlie, you could have said anything. You could have said anything. But why you had to say chop your dick off? You know that wasn't the way to go. Now, I understand that you were mad, but you also have to understand, too. When we talk about females and shit, as far as gay men is concerned, when we talk about females and we always say when the bitches get mad at you, their true feelings come out, they start, you know, call her not the F word and all this other stuff. It could be looked at like as soon as you get mad at somebody that's trans transgendered, the first thing that you want to yell out is some transphobic type of bullshit. Now, I'm not trans and the gay police. I'm not. I don't try to police what everybody says all the time, but that was fucked up. And, but at least you apologized. To the world for, for that. I do think that you were genuinely sorry for saying it. But it's fucked up. And you know they're coming for your ass, right? You know they're right. Oh. But then Delicious said that she fucked Charlie. And I'm like, where the fuck this coming from? Where the fuck? Lord, what the fuck going on? Because I just don't believe. I just can't see Charlie letting Delicious fuck him. I think I would have a better chance at doing it than he would. Not to say nothing, nothing negative about Delicious, but just looking at Charlie, I don't see how I, mm, but I don't know. But listen, Charlie look damn, but them pains look good on Charlie. I'm not going to keep talking about that, but yeah. And Zion comes out of the blue every time there's a scene with some missing. He always in the scene trying to clown somebody. Where the fuck? Boy, go somewhere and sit down. Like, go, go get you a plate. Don't know what's But then Brandon starts talking to his boyfriend. Now, everybody in the chat was saying there ain't with nobody on their phone. For your sake, Brennan, I hope somebody was on that goddamn phone and you wasn't bullshitting me. Because, child, that conversation seems so goddamn real to me. I don't know if it's the alcohol or what, but that shit seems so motherfucking real to me. <laughs> I'm telling you, that conversation seemed real as a motherfucker. I don't know, but, child, listen. You need to get it together, bitch. I swear. Like, y'all need to get together, like, straight up. And child, at the end of the episode, they said, at this point, Brandon realized that this platform wasn't for him. Make sure y'all go support him on OnlyFans. Ah! Why y'all so shady? Did y'all have to do the man like that? Y'all ain't have to do that. Y'all ain't have to do that. <laughs> anyway, this is my review on G-Status ATL Hustle. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Do whatever you see fit. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Scotty underscore by underscore nature. All right. I'm out. This is all I got tonight. Y'all, I am too serious motherfucker. And I'm finna go edit this goddamn video. And I'm gonna call it a day. I'll talk to y'all later.